Well, welcome to Aurora Hills Church's video blog called It's Personal, and I can't imagine anything that'll be more personal than today's testimony. I have a dear friend, Karen Apple, here, and she experienced a, well, a miracle from God in her life, and we asked if she could talk about it today. So welcome, Karen. Thank you. And um, we're talking about 1993, but tell us what your family was and what you were doing in 1993 before all of this happened. It was 1993 and uh, my family was uh, my husband Terry, my son Michael, and my daughter Carrie. When, when you first began to struggle with the disease you were going to have, I, I think you told me you were, you'd just come back from a skiing trip. Yes, I came back from a skiing trip and I was awful. All of a sudden, in fact, the time, the day we got back, I started feeling dizzy. And then I eventually uh, turned into a rash on my back. Couldn't understand what it was about. And if I recall, you had some misdiagnoses before you actually found out what was wrong. Yes, I, they, uh, I kept going to dermatologists and none of them knew what was wrong with me. The first dermatologist uh, get, did a biopsy on my, uh, the lesions on my back. And uh, she said, I, I don't know, maybe this is a leprosy. Wow. And so then I went to a second dermatologist. They didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. And then the third dermatologist uh, gave me a diagnosis. And so it, he draws blood and he calls your primary physician and says what? You need to go in the hospital. You're a very, very sick woman. You go from ski trip to, wow, what's going on? Once you're in the hospital, what did they finally figure out you have? They told me that I had cancer of the bone marrow, cancer, cancer of the skin, and cancer of the lungs. So this cancer had already metastasized through your body. Um, what kind of cancer did it end up being? Angiocentric T-cell lymphoma, which is a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And what's the likelihood of survival in 1993? about 30 percent because it was so rare. So 70 percent of the people who are diagnosed with this uh, are going to die from it. Um, what stage were you at? I was in stage 4b. So that's like the worst possible most Correct. advanced stage of the disease. Correct. So your chances of survival were slim. How'd they treat you? They, I received uh, 11 chemo treatments every three weeks and I got very sick you know nausea vomiting uh, diarrhea uh, lost my hair and after the 11 weeks what'd they say they said after the 11 weeks I was in remission all right and so you must have been feeling pretty good about that but that wasn't the end of it no it wasn't uh, in 1994, I was in remission up until I had a chest x-ray every three months. And in October, the x-rays came back full of cancer again in my lungs. So now, in all this time, you've been attending uh, like a, a cancer support group for people with the same problem. Yes, and it was getting pretty depressing because everybody was passing away and I was going to more funerals than I was celebrations of being cancer free. You see people one at a time getting the bone marrow transplant you're getting ready to get and it's not working for them, they're all dying. Right. So you're, now your chances are really slim because it's returned. Through all this, you're a believing Christian. Yes. How did God help? He, be, through the Word, the Bible, and the promises of the Word, the peace, there's scriptures for peace, there's scriptures for grace. Uh, I was in the Bible every day, 
and the promises of God, I would write them down and I had a whole sheet of scripture promises, healing promises, uh, grace promises, peace promises, joy. I even had joy through all of this. You, in the midst of knowing that your life was on the line and you weren't likely to live, you found joy and peace with God in prayer and reading His Word. Yes. And you made a list of the scriptures that were it became important to you. And I would read them every day. I, that I just said, God, your word says. And I would just go through that list. And I believe in faith that you're going to heal me. But if the ultimate healing is death, but I had an 11-year-old and a 13-year-old child that I need to raise. That's interesting that you said the ultimate healing is death, at least for a believer, because they know they're going to heaven where there's no more disease, no more tears. Uh, so you were ready to die, but you also were praying to live. Yes. I just asked God to please let me raise my kids. I had so many people praying for me. Uh, it, 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 the church uh, support group of, of just the people in my church and my friends. So after the bone marrow transplant, how did it go? Jesus healed me in the name of Jesus Christ. I no more, I had uh, uh, went one week with the bone marrow transplant and I was healed. There's no other explanation that the Lord Jesus Christ healed me. Your son, Michael, grew up and became a, a doctor of oncological pharmacy. I hope I said that right. A, a, an oncologist, pharmacist, doctor. And he actually ended up years later going to a seminar that dealt with your type of cancer. Uh, tell us what he learned from that doctor after the seminar. After the seminar, he went up to the speaker and said, my mom had that cancer. And he said, well, how long did she live? And I, he said, she's still living. And he said, how long has that been? He said, uh, 23 years. And uh, he said, wow, who's your doctor? So what was the guy in the seminar saying is the life expectancy now? for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, that particular type of cancer? Uh, nine months. And you're now, according to my watch, 26 years since you were diagnosed. That's right. And have you ever had a relapse since that one yeah. chest X? None. What we're saying today is that, uh, not that every person who cries out to God gets a miraculous healing. At the same time, Karen's a miracle and her life since that time is miraculous in that a procedure that wasn't really working for hardly anybody worked wonderfully for her. And uh, through all that, she was claiming the promises of God. Whether she had passed away then or not, the fact is she had a relationship with God that brought her peace and joy even in the most trying time of her life. We want you to find a relationship with a God that can see you through the challenges of life, whatever they might be. And so you can find in His Word the promises and the blessings and the hope that she was able to find in her darkest hour. To find that sustaining presence of God, the strength and the will to go on when things look impossible. That's the real miracle. The real miracle isn't that Karen was walked away from a cancer that probably should have taken her. The real miracle is the change inside of a person's heart when they meet Jesus Christ and find strength and humility and love for this world. So we want you to have that. And uh, one of the things that Karen mentioned was that she had a list 
of the scriptures that had become important to her, that had jumped out of the Bible at her during this time. We're going to post that list on our website and you'll see how you can access that and claim those own promises for yourself and pray through them yourself or share them with someone who's in that kind of a situation. So thanks for joining us on It's Personal and today you've seen just how personal a walk with God can be.